guys, we are coming at you today from Union Chapel United Methodist Church for week three of our Art and Nature installment. And today we are in the pollinator garden um, that Strive and Union Chapel have partnered to install on the property as part of Union Chapel's Creation Care Initiative. Um, Amanda will be talking to you later about Georgia O'Keeffe and her famous flower paintings. And so we thought the pollinator garden was an excellent place to um, highlight some of the native flowers to Indiana um, before Amanda's presentation later. Um, and we are in luck because today some of my absolute favorites are in bloom and I uh, wanted to share a little bit about each of those with you. So the first one right here to my left is called common milkweed. Um, its scientific name is Asclepius syriaca and um, this may be one that you're kind of familiar with. It is um, very important to uh, monarch butterflies as um, the species where they predominantly lay their eggs and where their larvae develop. Um, and in the effort to um, bring the monarchs back from uh, threatened status, um, growing milkweed is absolutely vital. So uh, we have a lot of it here and we're um, trying to do our part in that. Um, as you saw from the close-up that Amanda showed you, um, the species attracts a lot of other pollinators as well. The bumblebees are out in mass today. And um, there was another particular insect that I wanted to share with you. Um, I've got a sample here in my hand if he doesn't fly away on us. Um, this is a milkweed bug. Hello. And Goodbye. <laughs> while they're considered to be a pest um, to milkweed, if you're trying to raise them for um, the purposes of supporting monarch uh, habitat. They are a really interesting species. They have a very short life cycle and because of that they're used um, extensively in research of evolution um, in laboratory settings and so I just wanted to give you uh, a sense of that um, species as well. So we're going to move on to the next one which is another type of uh, milkweed. This one is called butterfly weed. And again, one of my favorites, the bright orange vibrant flowers of the butterfly weed are just incredible. So the scientific name of butterfly weed is Asclepius tuberosa and it is also a larval habitat for monarchs and other butterflies. Um, it is less preferred for the monarchs um, compared to the common milkweed just because it's a little bit smaller, it's got smaller leaves is not quite as um, protective a habitat compared to um, the common milkweed in terms of birds and other predators getting to those uh, monarch larvae. Um, the third one that I want to show you is called Monarda fistulosa. You may have also heard it called bee balm or um, wild bergamot. Um, if the name bergamot sounds familiar, uh, the plant does have some um, medicinal uses and herbal uh, remedy uses. Again, this is one of my favorites, just the frilly kind of um, firework shaped flower as Amanda put it, um, and definitely attracts bumblebees as well as uh, hummingbirds and a number of other pollinator species as well. So the next plant in our Indiana native lineup is Echinacea purpurea or purple coneflower. And uh, purple coneflower is also a medicinal plant. It has long been used in herbal medicines as a remedy for things like cold and flu, as a poultice for wounds and snake bites. It is also um, being heavily studied as an um, ingredient in modern medicine as well. Hey guys, Amanda here. Excited to tell you about week three and Georgia O'Keeffe, who is one of my favorite artists and favorite woman artists. Um, she was born in 1887, actually in Wisconsin on a farm. She began um, painting actually as a kid and all through um, elementary school, middle school, and high school. Her mom and dad saw that she was really, really good at painting, um, so they actually sent her to a few different art schools and the first one was in Chicago and the second one was in New York. Um, but rewind, back when she was back in Wisconsin, she just started to find um, beauty in the simple things. So uh, when you follow the websites that I put on the page, you'll see that she did a lot of mountains and flowers and seashells and 
Um, my favorites are just animal schools, and when she lived in New York, she actually did uh, buildings. So, and you'll also realize that um, with her love of nature, she really did like these abstract close-ups of things, which is what actually I will demonstrate here in a few minutes. But um, she loved finding just the curved lines of things and just the simplicity of flowers. So, I digress. I will talk more about Georgia. So, in, in New York, um, actually she didn't do that well right at first. Um, she was kind of thinking outside the box, which is how a lot of artists that I like and that I talk about do. But, you know, in art school sometimes that's frowned upon, and especially as a woman in the 1920s that was frowned upon. But that did not keep her from still doing her own thing. She said, too bad, so sad, I'm going to do my own thing. So she traveled a lot, and one of her favorite places um, actually was Texas. And so she moved to Texas. And she became a teacher there and just really fell in love with the desert there. And she kind of caught the eye of this gentleman back in New York. Now I'm really going to make a fool of myself with this name. His name was Alfred, I want to say Stitzklitz or Stieglitz. It is like the hardest last name. Anyway, we're going to call him Al because that's about all I can say. And anyway, Al had his eye on Georgia and she's like, I don't need a man. I'm going to stay in Texas. I'm going to do my thing, but Al owned a gallery in New York. And so they instantly became friends and she actually got her big break back in New York. She moved back and he said, hey, I really fancy you. If you would like to move back and marry me, you can paint all the days and you don't have to have any other job, which is really unheard of um, in the 1920s. Um, because women were supposed to stay at home and take care of their kids and have this huge family and two um, Art wasn't taken very seriously by women at that time. So they were kind of doing the opposite But she became extremely popular um, When she moved back to New York and that's when she started doing her huge pictures of flowers And there's actually one at the Indianapolis Museum of Art that you should see it is amazing It is one of my um, favorites and so um, she was super successful in her 30s and at that time she felt like she was missing something so actually she still stayed married to Al but she moved to New Mexico and did a whole series of their deserts there and schools and in 1977 um, President Ford actually awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom which I thought was really cool it's the highest honor of a citizen of the United States that you can get um, also, Georgia lived to be 98 years old, and she painted up until just a few weeks before she passed. She did start to lose her eyesight, um, but she hired people to kind of help her still paint up until she died. She died March 6th, um, 1986, and her highest painting, um, I do not know the year that it was sold. It wasn't that long ago, but it was $44 million. So, way to go, Georgia. And so, um, now we will paint um, a flower, just like Georgia. This is the example that we're going to paint together. I'm very, very excited. And also I'll be introducing um, a new medium, which let's go over what you need to get ready. Uh, you should have a watercolor set. Go ahead and open that up. You will need paint brushes. You can use the ones that we did from week one, or I think uh, we'll have a few more in there just in case you need extras. Um, get an old cup that you go ahead and fill with water and then we will provide you with napkins but I have had this one for I believe like eight years that I just refuse to get rid of so anyway we are gonna be using a lot of water hence watercolors so the first thing that Georgia did um, usually is just start with like a base in a center so we are actually gonna start with this center um, part of the flower so you are going to take your pencil also, sorry, I forgot to tell you, uh, use the watercolor paper provided. The cool thing about watercolor paper is um, it just holds clearly a lot of water, but it doesn't bend or shape like an uh, like an, uh, other type of paper does. And also you wanna try to use the rough side. That's my favorite side. Anyway, you should make an organic shape just like so. Okay, and then you will divide that into three parts. Okay. And then we're going to start to make these huge petals. So I'm going to do two this way, vertical, and make sure you don't want them 
You don't want them to look the same. Now I'm going to do two horizontal. Now, this part, I'm going to do one that goes off the page, and then that petal is going to come around. And one that goes off the page, and that part's going to come around. And the same with this one. And this last. So these four corners are going to be like our background. So the first thing now we're going to do, um, I'm going to teach you the difference between warm and cool colors. So warm colors I always teach in my class that I teach at school is anything that usually reminds you of fire. So yellow, orange, and red. Any cool colors are pretty much the opposite of that. So greens, blues, and purples. So the first thing we're going to do is actually take your bigger brush, dip it in the water, wake up those bristles. And let's do this really cool purple part. So in these palettes, you're going to need a lot of water. So you put some water on there. And this technique, I just hold exactly like a pen or a pencil. And I just have everything blow on me. <laughs> By the way, guys, today is 94 degrees outside. I don't know why Megan and I decided to come outside today but it is warm but the breeze feels good but I don't suggest doing this uh, outside all right and I know I'm working very fast if you haven't caught on to that yet you will but feel free to pause at any time so I'm just kind of kind of going over those lines all right perfect now we are going to do the edges in some cool colors. So this is totally up to you. I like to um, use them all together, actually. So I'll start with maybe like purple, and then I'll dip it in the water, and let's do some blue. And then why not some green? Why not? It's your picture, right? So you're going to do that for all four corners. Ooh, that's pretty. Alright. Beautiful. Perfect. Now, you will notice with um, watercolors, go ahead and wash off your brush after that. You will notice with watercolors, um, the more water you put on your brush and on your paper, um, the more it spreads. And sometimes that's good, and sometimes that drives people bananas. That is why I actually love watercolor, is because you, you kind of have control, but actually you kind of don't at all. So, I know that some people just do not like that, but... I like the craziness of it. So we are going to start, hello little ant, we are going to start on every single petal with the yellow and work our way back. And to me, I like if your purple is still um, a little wet and I like that they blend together. If you like things crisp, um, just make sure it's completely dry. So I would put the yellow all the way down. Again, I know I'm speeding through this like a cheetah. Ugh, it took me that long to think of something fast. <laughs> I think the heat's getting to me. Alright. And the great thing about watercolor is too, which you will find, uh, we're going to do layers. So, I really like yellow, but this isn't maybe my favorite shade of yellow. I don't feel like it's bright enough. So, I'll show you what I mean. So, the next one, right down the rainbow, we're going to do orange. And you can blend that right up into that yellow. I 
wish I had some good jokes for you, Megan. We'll find some. Yeah. Some good flower jokes. Mm -hmm. I feel like I should know some off the top of my head. Or some but... bumblebee jokes? I can't believe Ooh. I don't know any. All right. Now. These aren't the best quality watercolors, but that's when the layers come in. So there's our yellow that looks very similar to the orange. Or I'm sorry, there's our orange that looks very similar to the yellow. However, now I will take my red and finish out the edges. It kind of looks pink. That's okay. Blend that right up into the orange. If you want it more pink, here I'll show you a trick. If you just put water on the area and then get your paint. See how watery and nice that flows. Again, some people don't like, or they like to have more control. I kind of like to see more adventures, maybe? Maybe that's not the right word. Alright guys. By the way, this whole time you can use any size paintbrush. Probably the big one will be your best bet, I would assume. Alright, now when you get that part done, um, we're going to do a second layer. Now, if you like the faded, more pastel look, just leave it and then skip forward to when we do the middle or you can go back and this is my favorite part. I kind of use it as a pencil on its side and I just blend that up in there and I start with red. It should still be wet. And remember, every petal on a flower is much like our fingerprint, and none are the same. So you don't want them all to be the same, right? And then I go straight into my orange. See how much brighter that is? What would Bob Ross say? Pretty little flowers. Pretty little flowers. Happy, Happy little, little flowers. flowers. Yep. If it feels too dry, go ahead and dip it in that water. You can blend the other in. Again, this is an extra step. Just if you like it brighter, go for it. If you like the pastels, just skip to the part. I think it needs a little more yellow, maybe. Yeah, I like that. Water. All right. Okay. Now those petals look great. Now we're almost done. Actually, so for the middle part, um, you're gonna use black and purple. Georgia didn't do a lot of black, but I felt like we needed maybe just a little bit. So I'm gonna dip it in black and just kind of use it as a gray. And then I'm going to dip it in my purple and blend those together. Maybe a little more black. Now this last part is totally up to you guys. I have a weird obsession with outlining things. <laughs> um, you again don't have to do this since we already did that in that cool color with purple. But I kind of like the gray black a lot. So just very lightly I kind of go over area. Just my lines, just the petals, that weird organic shape in the middle. Also, and I forgot to bring it with me, watercolor is really cool um, when you put sea salt in it. So if anybody has salt or sea salt at home, um, there's a really cool effect that it does. You should try it. Actually, this would be in the middle would be really neat. I'm sorry that I didn't bring it, but it kind of makes it, it looks like tie-dye. It's really cool. Alright. And I think, if you feel like you're done, which I think we kind of are, that is our Georgia O'Keeffe.